Hey, a quick review over 3.2, a derivative of a function. The biggest thing that I want you to remember is the derivative is the slope of a curve at a point. And if I'm given a specific point, I can calculate its slope. Um, sometimes I can calculate a function that is the derivative for the function over its entire domain, wherever it's possible to find the derivative. And we can find the derivatives of everything um, except there is a discontinuity. Example here would be, um, actually, I'm going to call this a jump discontinuity. Um, slash vertical asymptote. Um, where there is a cusp. We're going to call ourselves a sharp engine direction. And quickly show you the absolute value graph. I like the absolute value graph. Remember that the derivative is a limit. Okay. And in order for the limit to exist, it has to be this, you're approaching the same number from both sides. So at this point right here, talk about the slopes of the line. Well, the slope here, the derivative is negative. The derivative here would be positive. Negative number and a positive number are never the same. So right here at that very sharp point, um, the derivative does not exist. That's a cusp. Now, on our parabolas, where we have that nice slow change going from negative, 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 closer to zero, here positive, 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 closer to zero, this one is. And places where I have um, Vertical tangents. Um, an example of something that would have a vertical tangent would be a graph that looks like this. Because again, as I'm approaching a limit, um, it's approaching positive infinity, and we're approaching does not exist for that slope right. And we'll get to more of that later on. One thing I'll say that if a function is differentiable, it is continuous. It only reads in this direction. If f is differentiable, then it's continuous. This does not read if it's continuous and it's differentiable. I've showed you an example right here. A continuous function could be not different. That's the big thing. Um, remember that big thing, derivative is the slope of a curve at a point. That's going to help you with the first half of the homework for 3.2. And for first one, problem number 10, says to use the graph of the absolute value of x to find the derivative. Well, from here to here, my derivative is equal to negative 1. From here to here, my derivative is equal to 1. And exactly at zero, my derivative does not exist. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, f prime of x equals negative 1. Negative infinity, 0, down brackets, close. f prime of x with the positive 1, 0 to infinity. Question 16 gave you a whole bunch of derivatives. And they asked you to um, match the ones that they were derivatives for. And here's what I'm going to tell you. These are the derivatives of the function. These two are increasing. Means they're going uphill. These two are decreasing. Means they're going downhill. So call this A. A is going to be the steepest uphill graph. And that was the one that kind of looked like this. Um, it was light blue. B was also going uphill, but it wasn't going uphill very steep. It's less than 45 degree angle because in the slope of one, you have a 45 degree angle. And it was the black one. So A there, B is there. By decreasing functions, the one that was the steepest was the green one, B. That is going to be here. And the um, one we're going to call C here, um, it's going downhill, but less steep. Something like this. It was the red one. That was the so again you have a constant derivative you have a straight line function that derivative is actually the slope of the line okay. yeah which brings us to a point is the derivative of a constant function they have the function f of x equals 2, derivative of that function is 0. The derivative of a constant has slope. OK. And that takes us to problem number 24. It gives us the function f of x equals negative 7. And it wants us to find the derivative by using limits. And it wants us to evaluate f prime of a for the given values of a. They gave us two of them, negative 1 and 2. So the first thing we want to do is take the limit prime of x approaches 0. H, f of x, all over h. Well, over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to do f of x plus h. Let's look at this. Um, there, I normally say to copy down the original function, except where there's an x in parentheses. That's what I'm going to do. And inside the parentheses, put what x is equal to. Well, guess what? Um, there is no x. There's no parentheses for me to put anything into. So f of x plus h for this constant function is just negative 7. f of x is equal to negative 7. And... Actually, look at it. 
this graph negative 7. If I were to write it as a limit, limit h approaches 0, negative 7 minus a negative over h equals 0 limit as h approaches 0. 0 over h. And here is where we're going to take the limit. I can't cancel an h out in this case. But let's think as I get closer and closer to 0, I have 0 over a number, positive number, which is 0. And I have 0 over a negative number. That limit is 0, which makes sense because the slope of a constant function is 0. That's the first part. Now it wants to know what f prime of negative 1. That's just going to be 0. I wanted f prime 2. That is just. Problem 28. Gives us a, a root function. After this lecture, well, we're going to figure out a shortcut for Same thing. F of W is equal to the square root or minus 3. Here they give us A's are equal to 1 and 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find F W plus H. I'm going to copy down the original function, except where there's a w, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put w plus h. Three. f of w is equal to root of three. I'm going to do some distributing in here. Third of four W H three. Now write my limit. Prime of W equals do F of W plus H, which is right here. Square root or W plus. Minus f of w, the root for three h. Got to write the limit. I'm going to get rid of these square roots by multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate of that root. Top. Get the square root. Of or that plus square root of plus three get the limit this time. On the top, it's a difference of squares pattern, so it's the first term squared, which is 4 plus 4, 3, minus the last term squared. Get a minus 4w. Minus of a minus 3 is a plus 3. Then everything's going to stay here on the bottom. H, parentheses, the Square root four four three plus the square root four three on the top four w and negative four w cancel three and negative three cancel h on the top cancels this h on the bottom and I am now left with the limit. 
as h approaches zero or square root of four two plus four plus the square root or I'm going to let h go to zero. And I have a square root of 4h minus 3 and a square root of, I mean, 4w minus 3 and a square root of 4w minus 3, which gives 2. Four on top. Four over 2 can simplify. Two over square root. So that is my derivative. That's the first part. Now it wants to know what f prime of one is. One. Copy the original function down and oh, I'm going to four. Four times one is four. One. One. Two. I'm going to do f prime. Three in, so I'm going to get two root of. I get twelve minus three is nine. Square root of nine. Um, one thing I want to point out here that is going to come in handy in one of our next lessons where we come up with our cut. Notice I had a linear function underneath that square root symbol. I ended up with a linear function by my answer. Same linear function. That square root went from the top to the bottom. Notice the coefficient of that linear function is up here on the top. And we're going to figure out where that comes from a little bit later. But that's something to look for right now is, hey, I have a linear function underneath the square root. I better have that linear. That coefficient should appear. It only works for linear. And the last one is problem number eight. 38, they want us to tell us that f of x is equal to the square root x plus 2. a is 7. They want us to um, find the derivative. They want us to find the equation tangent at a. So the limit process is going to look the same. F of x plus h equal to the square root of x h plus x x plus 2. The derivative limit h of 0. H two minus H. Again, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. Square root of X plus H plus two plus square root of also plus the square. Limit, h approaches zero. On the top, I get x plus h plus two. I get minus x minus two. 
and I'll leave everything the same on the bottom. Square root. Two. Again. X. X go away. So two. Go away. This H cancels. This H leaves one on the top. I can now let this H go to zero. Goes to zero. Left with x plus two and an x plus two, so that's one over two x one over two square root. But now what I need to do is I need to figure out what f of a is. F, I, I need to figure out f of a, figure out f prime of a. f seven two, put that in the original function. Square root of two, which is nine. So I want to find the derivative of f and comma derivative f equal to one over two one over two which is three six which Template down. Just fill in the blanks. I minus x x. Again, this limit process, the definition that we had for a derivative. Um, this will be one of the last sections that we actually have to do the limits for quite a while. Remember that you're doing almost the same thing every single time. Start to see patterns. Start to expect to see 